Okay, so I want to explain some uh, some basic things about buy rings. Buy rings and uh, equivalently, these are going to be uh, affine uh, ring schemes. Um, so the the reason I want to do this is is that these are going to encode. Um, these encode rings with extra operations. Extra operations. Uh, like derivatives. Um, so derivatives. So, so, so some examples of extra operations are like derivatives, uh, ring endomorphisms, And then, and then more complicated things. So you can start to do like algebraic geometry and and, and start to study equations where you where you look at equations that are not just polynomial equations, but they have extra operations. Okay. So let me just say what a, a biring is. So a biring. So let's say a R one. Uh, to let's let's actually do not do R one. Let's do uh, an A. Am I going to regret this? Let's say in R B by ring. Okay, and we're going to do denote this category. Uh, so by rings is going to be um, here to here okay um, and so this is going to be a category sorry so so this thing here is the category of RB by rings. Okay, so the objects are going to be um, uh, so they're going to be first of all Q is going to be a commutative ring. Uh, an R algebra. So it's going to have an addition, a multiplication, a zero and a one, uh, such that that uh, this functor that it represents. So this is HOM. So this is HOM. So I write HOM as the category. So the, this is the category of R algebras from Q in, into it. Uh, is actually a functor from the category of commutative rings over R. Okay, so first of all, it's the sets, but because it's going to be a by ring, it's going to be um, a a. Uh, it's going to go to uh, rings. Let's say rings over B. So let's say fixed R and B are going to be commutative rings. And we're not going to specify the base that they're over. So they're just going to be arbitrary commutative rings. Okay? Um, so this is equivalent to uh, spec Q uh, being having the structure and then we'll, we'll decode what this means. Um, what this means having the structure of a, uh, uh, a a B algebra scheme okay so the morphisms are uh, 
so they're morphisms of ring schemes. So they're morphisms, sorry, of R algebras that induce, uh, let's say, natural transformations. Of functors. Well, I mean, let's say uh, of functors to ring B. So, in particular, that needs to respect the. Uh, so, it needs to respect the. The ring B structures. Okay, so we're going to now decategorify. Let's decategorize. So let's decategorify. Gorify. Uh, uh, so let's just say decategorify. I don't see, I was going to say decategorify what this means. I don't know if that makes sense. We're just going to decategorify. And so what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to see what this combinatorial data actually is. Okay. So what this means is is that uh, so if Q is a um, is one of these bi rings, so it's an R algebra that it gives us the structure of a, a B algebra when we take Homs. Um, what it'll do is is it'll have uh, one a coaddition. Um, here and this is a map so like it's a co-multiplication so it'll have two co-multiplications I'm oh, sorry Q I'm thinking of uh, this is what this is the notation they use in Burger's paper so Q to Q R Q here and then there's going to be a co-unit here um, and uh, an antipode map so this is from uh, Q to R the base, and this will be from uh, Q to Q. Okay, and so this thing here uh, makes so this makes a spec so I guess this makes it this makes it a spec Q a co-commutative group scheme co-commutative or a commutative group scheme such that group scheme okay and so here um, this will become this will be the unit so this will this makes that uh, so this thing will be defined for every uh, R algebra this will give a point in the HOM set and then this will be the the uh, the unit under addition. Okay. So the other thing it has is that it has a co-multiplication. Okay. The co-multiplication is um, uh, uh, so I guess I, another thing that we have to say this is co-associative. Okay. Um, this is co-unit. It has co-unit axioms. So this is the co-unit, uh, and this is the antipode. Okay. So we have this other co-multiplication. It's this, it goes to the same place. Okay, and uh, and then we have this epsilon times, and then we have uh, oh we actually don't have this anymore. So this would make it a, like a, a field uh, a field scheme if we had one of these. So we don't have one of those. Um, and then there's this uh, collinear structure. And for first approximation, you can just think of everything R B as both being Z, and then you just kind of forget all that extra thing extra stuff so but uh, I mean you, we, by the extra stuff I mean this um, but here we're gonna have uh, 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 this this guy from B it's gonna be from uh, B to um, uh, this this guy here from R uh, Q to R 
okay? And this, because R um, is initial in the category uh, of R algebras, um, what we're going to have is, uh, w this is going to actually give us, this, this thing was, is going to induce the uh, B algebra structure on this. Okay, so this induces the B algebra structure. Uh, yeah, so, so this thing here, this is a ring homomorphism. Uh, okay, and so this thing, yeah, what I said is that this induces uh, the B algebra structure on functor of points. Okay, so there's this, this combinatorial data. Um, let me just say a little bit about how uh, these things work. Okay, so this is a, this is a lot of syntax. Um, let me just show you how these things work if you've never seen these co-multiplications. Okay, so, uh, so I had to use this stuff. Okay, so we'll take Q to be uh, one of these guys. Okay, and then we'll take, say, a ring uh, A. Uh, this is going to be uh, an R algebra. And uh, how do we multiply? Suppose we're taking uh, a constant in, in, in B. So we're taking a constant, and then we're take two guys in here. Uh, so... So this thing's now supposed to be, okay, so now this is a ring uh, by these axioms. Okay, and so how do we write things out? So uh, F uh, plus G, okay, so this thing is, is uh, we need to define what it does to certain elements. Uh, so we need to define what it does to elements of Q. Okay, so let's take so here, uh, Q is going to be in Q, and this guy, what it does is, is so here we're actually just going to apply it to this here, to delta times Q. And what this is, is, is we, we're going to use this thing called Swedler notation. So Swedler, uh, so what you do is you, you write uh, Q let's say, uh, well, maybe I won't use quite sweet, Sweetler. Um, mm, okay, well, let's just do this for now. QI one plus, uh, let's say QI one plus QI two plus. Okay, and, uh, and so this sums over I. So we're gonna have a bunch of other elements here. Okay, so this is this is what it looks like, uh, and so this is the co-multiplication. So we can write it out in terms of this, and then what you do is you apply it to each term. And okay, this is like it, okay. I should say that this this algebraic structure is is like magical. Um, I I want to show maybe if you've never seen the co-algebra thing for Bernoulli numbers, maybe I'll do a quick video on this. Uh, so the co-algebra structure for Bernoulli numbers is like amazing. Like it allows you to do like Bernoulli number magic. Uh, okay. That being said, th these these types of formulas are like really symmetric. Um, it says that functions on certain rings are really symmetric, and then you can identify certain uh, numbers and things like this as, as functions, or they're related to generating functions. And so um, anyway, anyway, uh, that's kind of a, a tangent here. You, we, we're going to do the same thing uh, for these guys. So, And now we're going to have a different co-multiplication. So we have F tensor G, and then we do the co-multiplication on Q. And this guy is like this, applied to this, QI1 uh, times tensor QI2 times. And so this is equal to the sum over I of F of QI1 times G of QI2 times. Okay, so this is kind of like how you multiply things out. 
Um, all right. So the units and co-units. So the so we're gonna have um, these epsilon times, right? So this guy is actually good, we can actually view it. I'm gonna I'm gonna slightly abuse notation. And the same thing. This guy is in here of R Q A. Okay, and and what it needs to have, and so this is actually induced from uh, this comes from this map. R Q A. Oh, sorry. R. C ring. Uh, R Q A. Okay. So that we had this ring homomorphism from here to here. Um, okay. And then, uh, so like, if we take epsilon times times f q, uh, this guy is cooked up in such a way so that. Um, uh, we have that uh, times times f tensor with f. So for every q, uh, this is equal to um, just f of q. Okay, so this is cooked up so that this 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 happens. So there's there's a compatibility between. between um, delta times and epsilon times. Okay, so there's going to be an axiom for these things. So this is kind of an example of, of where these things come from. And then if you kind of just follow your nose as to uh, what the ring axioms are for, you know, what the, you, you just write down the ring axioms for this thing and how the rules were defined before, then you'll be able to write down the diagrams for uh, the co-multiplications and how they're related. And so like you will have like the co-distributive thing as well. Okay. So I think I'm going to pause uh, for a second to collect my thoughts and then uh, I'll be back. So it turns out I made a poor notation choice for using R, so like back here, uh, for using R as the base ring. Um, let's not do that. Let's not use R as the base ring. Let's use something else. Let's use, uh, I should have used B as the base ring. I should have used, hmm. So the Borger Wheelan people they use K and K prime. Um, an A algebra? Let's try A and B. That's okay. B for the base. And then A's will be here. Okay. So this is B. This is A. This is B. This is A. 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 I don't know. Do I need that? A. This is a B. This is A. So B is not for bi ring too. That's kind of bad. Uh, so this is B. This is A. This is A. This is B. This is uh, A. Oh, sorry. B. This is. A, this is A. Okay, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm just going to have these these things like this. Okay, so uh, so everywhere we had a, a, a B or an R, so the base base ring, we're we're going to replace it with B. So B is going to be the base ring now, and then uh, A is going to be it's going to be A algebras. Uh, okay, um, let me go back. Now that I fixed that, I, I'm going to uh, go back to. Um, my example, I think. Okay, I'm going to stop the video. Okay, so I want to give a, the first definition of actions. Uh, first, let um, so so this category will be the category of, of ring schemes over Z. Um, 
so here the the objects are going to be ring schemes R with uh, and I'm going to say they're subjective maps and this is the identity ring scheme. Um, okay, so let's let Q so so okay so this is what this category is so this is the category of ring schemes with this projection here and I call this pi and so uh, definition uh, and action of uh, so let's R on let's say a uh, ring scheme here. Z is a morphism, is a, is a section uh, of this natural projection. Let's, let's say R of C, pi of C, uh, to C here. Okay, let's call this um, beta. Okay, uh, so it, is it, this is a section of this map. There will be several um, other ways of doing this. Uh, this is just one way of, of formulating it. And this is the simplest case we're doing it over Z and we're saying that this thing is surjective. So this is kind of, uh, this This is the basic uh, definition. It's not, I think, it's not the baby most definition, but it's a basic one. Um, so, okay, so let me just give an example. Um, if R is the dual numbers, okay, so recall that the dual numbers of C is this ring, T squared, then let's look at what this does. So, uh, so we have a ring homomorphism here, such that when we project, we get the identity. So the composition is the identity. Okay, and now um, let's let's write what this does. So beta of C. So this is equal to beta zero of C plus uh, let's say t beta one of C, and this is mod t squared since we're working in this ring, right? And then we know that after we project down the projection uh, from let's say C zero plus t C one is equal to just C0. So this thing looks like C plus TB1, beta 1 of C. Okay, and let's write out what it means to be a ring homomorphism. So the, the claim is that uh, beta 1 is a derivation on C. Okay, so Okay, so this is an action of C on R, so this is going to be beta C1, C2, C1, beta C2. Okay, so this is going to be C1, C2 plus, and then I claim that this is just, uh, well, you have to write it out. So you'll see that this looks like C1 beta of C2 plus C2 beta of C1 beta 1, like so. And then this is just going to be C1, C2 plus T uh, beta C1, C2, which implies that beta of C1, C2 is equal to C1 of beta 1 of C2 plus C2 of beta 1 of C2, or C, C1. Okay, and so this this is, um, uh, so this tells us that uh, that beta 1 is a derivation on C. Okay, so I'm going to pause for a second. Okay, so, um, so, so I'm going to define a category of actions. Um, so first, uh, let me give you a definition. So, uh, so let's let let uh, Q be a uh, Byring, um, and so it's going to be a B algebra, and then it's it's going to be uh, it's going to represent. So a spec of Q is going to be um, uh, an an A algebra scheme, um, and 
So then let's take B1. Uh, uh, so this is going to be something in B, and A1 is going to be, uh, uh, sorry, it's going to be in a, a, a B algebra, and this is going to be an A algebra. And then uh, we can make a definition now, um, an action of Q uh, from A to B, from A to B, or A1 to B1. And, and so... Uh, from A1 to B1. And so sometimes we'll write this like this. Um, is a morphism of schemes, uh, let's say, C ring B from Q to B1. Here. So it's just a morphism of schemes like this. Um, so actually, we, we can take these and, and we can, so I'll give some examples of this, but let's just see that formally this is a category. So this forms a category. A category. Uh, so uh, we are going to have uh, act these cues from A1, B1. And so uh, these are going to be the objects, so we're going to have row ones in here. Um, so a morphism, uh, so let's describe the morphism. So these are the objects of the category. And so the morphisms are, uh, well, they're going to look like diagrams like the, as follows. So we're going to need a ring homomorphism here. And then we're going to need another ring homomorphism from uh, here. So Q, Q to B2, like so. So row one, row two. So they're given by, uh, so the, the data, and then this is the axiom here. Uh, we're given a ring homomorphisms, so this is a this is an A algebra morphism, and then we're given also a, a B algebra morphism. Two, two, two. Uh, and then these maps. Well, I guess we don't need that. So uh, a C ring B morphism. Okay, so we have these things, and then this they're diagrams like this. Okay, so that's what a morphism is. Okay. Okay. So... So let me say that there's going to be I'm going to get it, we're going to get a functor. Um, so uh, I want to describe uh, this functor. So there's a, there's a there's a nice functor. So let's take Q. It's going to be a bi ring with base B and um, and, it, and it goes to A algebras. And what we can do is we can take. Um, uh, so let me just say this. So there's this construction where let me write it like this. So let's say so let's take an A algebra. And um, what we can do is is we can take an A algebra, let's say uh, I don't know what we should call it. Say A one. Okay, so this is an A algebra. A1. And what we can look at is we can look at, so now this is going to be a ring. So since this is in here, and then let's take, what do we need? We need um, a B algebra, so let's say B1. Okay, B1. Uh, okay. 
So we have these guys here. And so this guy here is an A algebra, or this is a A algebra, uh, by the definition of, uh, of, of um, the, the Q is a bi-ring. And so this thing here, uh, this makes sense. Okay, it's a morphism of A algebras. Well, it turns out that uh, this is going to be isomorphic to um, this morphism of uh, B algebras. And what we're going to do is we're going to take Q composition product with, uh, uh, let's say, over um, B here, uh, sorry, uh, A, A1 to uh, B1. Okay, so this is analogous, so this is the adjoint, so th there's going to be an adjoint functor. Okay, so this says that wh when you're represented by a bi-ring, there's an adjoint functor. So we have, um, we have this thing, for, so what do we, let's draw a little diagram. So we have this guy from uh, uh, B algebras to uh, A algebras. Okay, and then there's this left adjoint. So this is the left adjoint. Okay, so this is uh, composition product with uh, a uh, a one or so they say q here this is c ring q so uh so i e that this this guy blank uh so c ring b q b q uh, is an adjoint pair of functors. Okay, so this is cool. This is amazing. Uh, so this is like the the the. Uh, so this is uh, analogous to. Uh, so this guy is. Uh, analogous to sorry is analogous to the tensor product right so like we have hom and then it, it, we get a tensor product over here so um, so this is a this is this claim that there exists an adjoint um, or fact and then I, I'm going to kind of show you how to construct this so um, So let's say that is good. This is good. Okay. So how do we do this? So how do we do this? So so we need to take. Um, okay. So we have Q's, and we have um, uh, we have like Q1, Q2, an element of Q which is a bi-ring. Um, so a bi-ring from, uh, let's say, uh, so we, what do we say, B to A. Okay, and then let's take fix uh, uh, B1. Uh, let's, well, let's say, say A1. Okay, so this is gonna be an A algebra. And then we can take, uh, let's say, A1, or A in, in A1, okay? And so what are we gonna do? We're gonna define these uh, crazy relations now. So there's kind of two levels of this thing. I'm gonna define the first one, uh, Q1, Q2, uh, applied to A. We need to define what this means. And then Q1 plus Q2 
uh, applied to, to A. Okay, and uh, we also need to t talk about what it means for, um, uh, let's take uh, uh, a constant in uh, A. Okay, so C. Okay, and so, okay, so what we're constructing is, um, uh, we're constructing this, this ring here, uh, and it's going to be this uh, free, uh, so it needs to be a B algebra on the symbols. Um, so Q uh, composition product with A uh, for Q and Q and A and A. Okay, modulo some relations, and then I'm going to just I'm de describing the relations now. Okay, so there's kind of this first tier of relations. The first tier of relations say that um, this is an al this this kind of is uh, an algebra. Okay, the second thing, uh, so we're going to have Q1, Q2, and then here is this, this is just going to be this constant. And now, uh, now we're going to have, so this thing says that, uh, what does this say? This, this car part says that um, it acts like a, an algebra on this side. Okay, so so this is this is I guess um, these could be called like the pointwise axioms, pointwise action axioms. And okay, and then then this is the the first thing, and then the second thing that the this is the first part of the relations. The second part of the relations are are what happens uh, over on the other side. Um, so let's take uh, a1, a2, and a1, and then um, and then a constant in, uh, let's say, uh, a b. Okay, so this is going to be the b algebra structure, and what it says is that uh, so we need to talk about what this does. So q composed with uh, applied to two guys. So we should think of this, we should think of Q as an operation and it acts on the addition. So there needs to be an addition and a multiplication rule. Um, and the multiplication rule will be, will be encoded from this and then uh, there's going to be a rule for, for constants. The rule for constants is the following. It says that, uh, 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 what do we do? We take Q applied to some constant here. Okay. Okay, so um, sorry, C is going to be an A again. This needs to be an A. Okay. So what is the rule here? So we just do what we do. We do our thing, right? Uh, and that will say, I'm going to do this. I'm going to write it like this. Uh, A1 tensor A2. Okay, and then we're going to do this one again. So uh, we're going to do delta plus Q. And then here we're going to do uh, so uh, beta. of uh, C and then take Q. Okay, so this one here, uh, so what we do is we just kind of expand out what we have. So we had QI one plus of A, or let's say composition product with A, one, and then we have QI2 plus composition product with A2. Okay, so then we have this multiplication like so. 
So this goes for over eyes. Uh, and so here we're going to do the same thing. We're going to apply this and then we're going to do the composition product component wise. So QI2 plus composition product with, sorry, one times. Oh, shit, crap. This is times. This is plus. Uh, here, QI2 times composition product with a 2, 1, 2. I. Okay, so these are very over different eyes. Um, and this is the, okay, so this is the, uh, the action rules. Okay, so this is the, the, this is how you construct it. Um, Okay, so I'm going to stop the video for a second and collect my thoughts, and then I'm going to talk about how these rules give us uh, actions. So I wanted to just look at this, um, this map. Here. In the case Q is a uh, by ring from B to A. Okay, so, so suppose, so this is often the case, so um, that uh, that there's a natural transformation to the identity functor, okay, which we'll call pi. Then, um, then one, the first thing it implies, it'll imply two things. Um, well, the, this one's kind of optional, it doesn't really depend on this, but uh, it just is another application of adjointness. Uh, it says that, okay, so if we, we take this composition, okay, this tells us that uh, we have B is, is naturally in A algebra, a uh, natural way. Okay, so this is the algebra map. Um, there's a, the, the there's this alternative interpretation. Uh, if we look at uh, everything over Z, this map beta from A to this dude. Uh, over Z. So this tells us that uh, we, we have an adjoint uh, here. And so this this thing here is really uh, uh, this 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 axiom that says that Q composition product uh, with an element uh, of C where C is an element of A. Uh, it, 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 so the, this thing looks like um, beta C of Q really says that this says uh, that uh, Q acts on C uh, or acts on uh, A according to what beta prescribes. Okay, that's that's all I wanted to say about this. Um, I'm going to pause again and, and collect my thoughts some more. Okay, uh, so uh, there's another interpretation of um, of this map beta. If uh, so. So the fact that um, uh, uh, that that a one is an a algebra and uh, uh, b one is a b algebra uh, gives us uh, maps like so. 
Okay, and this is a, this is equivalent to saying okay. So so the 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 beta axiom, so the axiom, the prolongation uh, axiom. Uh, we'll call this the prolongation axiom. Uh, implies uh, this that this diagram commutes. Um, so uh, so in particular, what it says is that we the the that we actually get a map from here to here, okay? That imposes the relations on this that come from this map here. Um, Okay, so that's that's what I want to say about that. Um, so, so suppose let me do an example. Uh, suppose Q is finite type, so it looks like B of Q zero up to Q S. Okay, and then we could mod out by some relations, but I'm not going to do this for now. Um, uh, and let's take a1 to be look like uh, a of uh, x1 up to xn, and then have uh, some polynomials here. Uh, okay, so this is just like a polynomial ring. Then uh, q composition product with a of uh, a1. This will just look like uh, q uh, b, where you take these symbols. Uh, and um, uh, I less than N, let's say uh, J goes from zero to S. And then we mod out by uh, these guys, QJ, composition product with FI, where these again range over the same thing. So I, I is, uh, one to R and then J is the same. And um, and so here, what, what are these things really? Well, QJ, composition product with FI. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this in quotes, okay? Because it's not, I, I want to think of this as actually uh, elements of here, okay? So QJ will actually be, these, will, these are gonna be elements of the numerator, but it's done by expanding out uh, uh, so um, and let me say this so uh, so these these guys are expanded uh, using the uh, sum and product rules. Okay, also, um, so, and also the uh, beta rule uh, for the action on the coefficients. Coefficients of the FJ. Okay, and so by by the sum and product rule, I mean this these 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 axioms here. So these axioms will allow us to break up. Uh, so f will be some combination, and then so replying these repeat, repeatedly, uh, and this to the, the to this this axiom to the coefficients will allow us to get uh, some relations here. So the coefficients are in a, but after we apply um, these this axiom, we'll get them to be in b. Um, Okay, so that's that's uh, that's how you do this. Um, so let me see. Let me just tell you what this looks like uh, in a particular example, uh, like a sub example. Um, so let's take um, uh, a equal to b equal to this ring C of t, and uh, the beta action uh, will be given by uh, d d t. So we have this map from C of T to uh, C of T, let's say C of T adjoin uh, epsilon mod epsilon squared. Uh, and it's given by, uh, let's say, G 
maps to G plus DDT of G uh, epsilon squared or epsilon. Okay, so we have this, and um, uh, so so now what I can take it now I'll take Q. Sorry, will will be the the um, this is the by ring associated to to the dual numbers, and if we view the dual numbers as a ring scheme, this is just O of the dual numbers. Um, okay, and here we are going to compute what this looks like. So, so this is actually uh, C of T. Uh, in this case, we're going to have it be like this. And so we're viewing the du no dual numbers over C of T. Okay, and this is what we're going to have. We have this and then we have this derivation. And um, so when we compute this out, we can actually composition product and then we have this this derivation here maybe we can put the derivation here um, this is just a notation of and uh, let's say we we are going to look at a particular example uh, t and what we'll get here is um, uh, the following ring we'll get an isomorphic to the following ring X squared minus 2t x x prime minus y prime okay and so the identification goes with uh, e composition product with x is goes to um, uh, x e composition product with y goes to y uh, d with of uh, composition product with x goes to x prime and d composition product with y goes to y prime Okay, so what it does is all you do is you take the regular equations that you had, and then you take extra coordinates for the derivatives, and then you differentiate the equations. So this is actually coincides with the jet ring. So this is this will be the jet space or the twisted tangent space where you twist by the derivation.